It's good to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Millsy. Hey, welcome to Commander, and we are back for another episode of Millsy Brews, the show where I brew a deck for you on my quest to outbrew your favorite magic channel. If I am your favorite magic channel, I will outbrew myself. It doesn't make any sense, but that's my goal. <laughs> Millsy Brews. As a show where I prepare a deck for you, my version 1.0 list with little to no testing, just me trying to figure these decks on out. And my hope is that we get to have some conversation down in the comment section about how this deck should look like, changes that need to be made, what our strategies could or couldn't be. I love having conversations with you guys down in the comments on what you guys think of these decks. It's been a lot of fun to... Um, have some discourse and see cards that I missed or or see cards that we all missed <laughs> on different things and how they work. That's that's what makes brewing fun, and I hope that that's what you're willing to encourage me with is letting me know down in the comments when you think I've missed something or, or what you think should be added or just opening up that discourse down in the comments as well. Um, I mentioned it in, in, in the last video. Today is a theme week. We have about three weeks until March of the Machines. So what I wanted to do is have some fun brew some things that I want to brew or haven't brewed before. And so I came up with a couple ideas for some planes that maybe, or, or some sets that we could brew some commanders around that I, I have not had the chance to brew yet for Millsy Brews as the channel uh, has only started in, within the last year. So of course there's a lot of sets that have come out that I, I didn't actively have the chance to brew for. Um, and Innistrad won. So that's what we're doing this week. Uh, most of the commanders, if not all of them this week, are from... Uh, Midnight Hunter Crimson Vow. That's not because there isn't anything good outside of <laughs> Midnight Hunter Crimson Vow and Estrad. It's just because I think both of these sets added so many good commanders, especially for certain tribes that are so prevalent on in Um, I am not tackling green white humans this week. I actually already did a video on Kyler Cigar Nemissary on the channel. I recommend you go check that out if that's a deck you're interested in. But today, uh, I felt like it was necessary, and I don't think there's a question on who the best zombies commander from Innistrad is, and that is Will Health the Rock Cleaver. Uh, probably one of the best precons that Wizards has ever released with a uh, set um, simply because of its ability and its ability to be such a good commander. Will held the Rock Cleavers two blue black for a three three zombie warrior legendary creature. Whenever another zombie you control dies, if it didn't have decayed, you make a two two black zombie creature token with decayed. So the decayed creature can't block. And whenever it attacks, we sacrifice at the end of combat. So most of the time. If that token is still alive after combat, we're going to sacrifice it. In the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a zombie if you do draw a card. So Will Health does two things really well. The first is the beginning of our end step, we can sack a zombie token that we're probably going to have anyway to draw a card. And that's killer because blue wants to do one thing, and that's draw cards. <laughs> the first ability has a lot of combo potential, and we built it into the deck. It has a lot of combo potential. But I think the important thing here is that's a not a once per turn, friends. So if, if a zombie we control dies, whether it's a token or not, if it didn't have decayed, we get a zombie with decayed. So I think the really important part about that first ability is we can almost feel like we can swing our tokens, we can get into combat or block with our zombie tokens. If they don't have decayed, they can block, right? Because we know they're just going to get replaced. So Wilhelm's very interesting in that sense because I think it adds so much so much potential that we may not realize. Okay, so we have to talk really quickly about um, some combos in the deck because I because I built them in and I built them in for a reason and that's just because I think uh, combos aren't a bad thing, especially when um, you can do them easily or you can find them fairly easily. Now, the one thing I'll admit is this is a deck I, I didn't expect, honestly, to, to like. Not that I don't like zombies. I've played against plenty of zombies decks in my time, but uh, Demir's just been an odd color combination for me where I have yet to find a deck I really enjoy. And I like the um, kind of combo -y nature of this deck, but not only that, I love how much this feels like an Aristocrats deck without being an Aristocrats deck. For anyone who's never played an Aristocrats deck before, it's a deck where you're trying to utilize your creatures, sacrificing them or them dying for value. And I feel like that's literally the MO that this deck wants to do. Um, I know that zombies don't traditionally get looked at as Aristocrat decks because they're zombies decks. They just do completely different things. But I think if we can approach it this way, I think we can find a lot of good value. The one card I think that works really well with Wilhelm is Poppet Stitcher. So on the front side, this is when you cast an instant or sorcery, you make a 2-2 creature token with decay. That's great. In the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more creature tokens, you can transform Poppet Stitcher. On the back, it says, creature tokens you control lose all abilities 
and have base power and toughness 3-3. Three, three. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may transform Puppet Factory. Well, with Wilhelm, we're now making any zombie token we create with Decayed lose Decayed, which means then if we get rid of that token, we would make another one, right? Because it didn't have Decayed, but as soon as it comes in, it doesn't have one. So now you could start to see that we have a pretty dangerous half of a combo here, don't we? Because we're now making zombie tokens that don't have Decayed, and as soon as we do something with them, we get one back with Wilhelm. And that doesn't that's not a once per turn. That's that's literally every time. So you could start to see we have a dangerous combo brewing here. Now there's plenty of other ways we can take this. Um but my favorite one, as long as we have a sacrifice outlet, is blasting station. Or as long as we have a uh, as so long as we have those two out, there's Blasting Station. It says Sacrifice Creature deals one damage to any target, and then whenever a creature comes into play, we untap it. Well, with, with Puppet Factory and Wilhelm, we sacrifice the a, a zombie we have to Blasting Station to deal damage to an opponent. Wilhelm sees our zombie without Decayed dies, makes us a zombie with Decayed. Remember, Puppet Factory shuts off the Decayed, no longer has Decayed. Blasting Station untaps, and we're going to just ping out our opponents for lethal. Now, that is one combo, but... What I've done my best here, and we'll, and we'll get kind of down into the deck so I can start explaining why. Here's my mana base. Again, pretty, I think a pretty average blue-black mana base. Uh, we're playing uh, things like Takanuma and Mortuary Mire to take advantage of our graveyard since it's going to be there. We're playing the Urbor Cabal Coffers combo because I just I think it's important, it, uh, especially if you can generate enough black mana to just play a bunch of things. Cavern of Souls is going to help us not get a couple of our zombies countered if possible. But... uh the other kind of um, combo enabler in this deck is Rooftop Storm. It says you can pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for zombie spells you cast. Well, if we have something that cares about things dying, I don't know, like that Blasting Station or Bastion Remembrance or Agent of the Iron Throne that deals damage to each opponent when a creature we control dies or goes to the graveyard, Rooftop Storm can take something like a uh, grave crawler that we can cast from our graveyard as long as we control a zombie and now we can cast grave crawler as many times as we can we could sacrifice it get it back from our graveyard sacrifice it get it back from our graveyard so we're using things like meat hook and bastion and angel of the throne and blasting station because blasting station can still sacrifice it to um keep getting it back keep dealing that damage and so we're kind of widening this combo sphere that will how it has that we can uh, use this for. But I think the good thing about Wilhelm is that we're, we're not just a straight up combo deck. In fact, zombies are always very hard to deal with because they tend to just outvalue a lot of their creature types. We're playing things like Grave Pack. Whenever a creature we control is put into a graveyard, each other player sacrifices a creature. Well, if we're running down any of these combo lines or if we swing with a bunch of our decayed zombies, remember they sacrifice themselves at the end of the combat. They don't get exiled, which means with Grave Packed out, all of those are going to trigger and people are going to have to sacrifice creatures. Um, I thought about the Dictate Erebos as well, but I chose to stick with just Grave Pact because I was trying to find some slots. Um, but let's go through the rest of the enchantments because I honestly think they're all pretty good. Black Market Connection is going to get us a treasure, could, could draw us cards. Dreadhorde Invasion, we uh, get a, we lose a life in a mass one, so we make this um, army, black uh, zombie army token in the niche turn. It's going to get uh, another plus one, plus one. And then whenever a zombie token you control a power six or greater attacks, it gains lifelink, so we could potentially give it lifelink. Uh, Endless Ranks of the Dead, one of, one of the best enchantments for this deck at the beginning of your upkeep. You make X zombie creature tokens, where X is half the number of zombies you control. The... Um, the more zombies they have, the more we're making. Uh, Ghoulist Procession, whenever one or more non-token creatures die, you make a 2-2 zombie with Decayed. Uh, this does not care about our creatures. This is any creatures. It only triggers once per turn, but we could potentially have this trigger on everyone's turn to get us a zombie. Haunted One is kind of an interesting card. This one came out in the Horrors pre-con, but I think it fits, fits Wilhelm really well. It says, when this creature becomes tapped, it and other creatures you control that share a creature type with it get plus two plus oh and have undying until end of turn. And dying says that if it were to die, it comes back with a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, minus one minus one counter on it. Sorry. If it didn't have a plus one plus one counter on it, that's right. It comes back with a plus one plus one counter. Well, this is great, right? Because it kind of gives it will help a free attack or a free um attack because it'll it can come back right and um and then giving them plus two plus oh just makes all of those tokens that we're taking with already harder to deal with mystic or more and Ristic study in here for some draw again not only are we wanting to draw into our combos but i think we just need to draw to survive we're one of those decks that if we can play a ton of removal we can play a ton of fancy things 
but we're going to need to draw into them. Necker Duality as a card just is an insane card when you think about it in a deck like this. And when I'm, uh, this was the card, uh, when I saw this spoiled in Crimson Vow, I was like, man, this would be the reason you'd play a zombie deck, especially in blue-black, because this card is just bonkers. Remember, a non-token zombie enters the battlefield under your control, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Friends, that's not a once per turn. That That's literally just whenever a non-token zombie enters the battlefield under your control, you make a copy of that creature. That makes that Gravecrawler combo even even better because you're getting two of them each time and not just one but not just that most of our zombies aren't legendary friends which which means that we're getting two of them instead of one this is better if you think about it than reflections of lit jar on this deck because if we get them out of the graveyard with reanimate or if we bring them back somehow we're still getting the copy this is not a cast trigger this is coming back out of the graveyard which is something we already want to do anyway right um we have, we're, play, we're playing Geese and Garrow, right? We're playing other ways to play zombies back out of our graveyard. Necrodally is just going to copy them when they come back. This card is insanity to me personally because, like, it, it does everything we want to do and just doubles it to make it better. Open the graves whenever a non token creature you control dies, we get a 2 2 zombie. Think about this alongside all these combos we've talked about where we're sacrificing non token creatures or, cre or token creatures, right? But if we, let's say we're on the grave crawler combo. We're netting a zombie token every time we do it. Um, and that that can gives us more sacrifice fodder, do more things. Like open the graves, yes, it's it's very expensive at five mana. But at five mana, it's going to in a lot of ways protect us from board waves. It protects us from a, a lot of things that would normally completely wipe our board out and leaving us something behind. And then Meat Hook, yes, Meat Hook is removal. Meat Hook is a great card for that. But what I like it for is its first ability. Whenever creature control read we die, each opponent loses a life. So this is great because it's going to help us on this aristocrats train. Um yes. I'm, I'm trying to pretty much shove the aristocrats train to the zombies because I don't quite understand why you wouldn't. Okay, there might be someone that right now is watching the video and goes, Mills, no, no, you don't get it. Zombies are supposed to be X. Please tell me in the comments. Like, I get it. I get that not every deck's going to have exactly what I want it to. But to me, it's like, why wouldn't you go aristocrats with this? You have so many ways to get creature tokens back. You have so many ways to net these creatures. And you have all of these open combo lines to use them for your advantage. So I don't particularly get it if it's not, and I would love to know down in the comments if it's not, but this is how I built it, and I think it works pretty well. Um, Arcane Signet, Demir Signet, Heraldic Banner, which can pump all of our black zombies, but also taps for mana. Midnight Clock, Soul Ring, Talisman. All of our mana rocks tapping for mana. I, I thought about putting in a couple more mana rocks, but I decided that at the end of the day, uh, we need to kind of sink or swim on uh, the things we're doing, and... Um, I made a personal version of this brew because I was kind of interested to try this for myself and I went a little bit more aggressive on tutors and things like that. Um, so I, I pulled them out for this list. But um, I'm intrigued to see how this does. Uh, Crowd of Crypt does also get us a black mana. Whenever creature we control dies, we get a, crypt, uh, a corpse card on it. And then we can sacrifice it and to create a 2-2 two -two Zoken with Decayed for each corpse counter on it. I mean, this is something that could eventually get us enough, enough creatures to sacrifice to Phyrexian Altar or, or Ashnod's Altar to make us mana. Um, this, I like this this idea of this th three mana mana rock that has an upside. You know, we saw Curse Mirror. We saw Machine God's Effigy. We've seen all of these kind of a artifacts with an upside. I, I like Credit Crypt. I think it does a good job um, at what it does. We talked about the altars allowing us to sacrifice creatures for, for mana. Again, I think it just fits our strategy. It does what we want to do anyway. And then Wand of Orcus, whenever an equipped creature attacks or blocks it and zombies you control gain death touch on a turn. This is great because our tokens are probably all, already going to have death touch. We have a lot of zombies that give other zombies death touch, but just even better. And then whenever it deals combat damage to a player, create that many zombie creature tokens. So if we can get this on the right creature or we can get this on the right creature with that that's in the air or can attack, you know, there are a couple of zombies that give other zombies flying. Our opponents don't have flying blockers. We can put this on Will Hurl or somebody else and just go in and get a bunch of two twos. All right. Getting into the spells. Um, I think it's an interesting spell suite because we get to play the like unmarked grave and entomb type cards because we can get things back out of the graveyard with uh, Geese and Garroth or some other things. So I find it kind of interesting that we can play this unmarked grave in tomb kind of style and dump things into the graveyard we want. We're playing the reanimate because it eventually is going to come to our advantage where we need to get something back out and we can't use Geese and Garroth. Um, or something like that. Uh, brainstorm for some draw, Psych Rift, of course, the classic. 
blue bounce all. Uh, if if you want to play Psych Rift effectively, I would just suggest that you learn how to play it at the right time. Don't just bounce a board for the sake of bouncing a board. Don't treat it like a board wipe. I like to treat Cyclonic Rift as a piece that can push you forward by stopping your opponents at the right time or clearing the board for you so that you can win the game via combat at the right time. Uh, Psych Rift can cause a lot of uh, uh, bad feelings, and I and I completely get it, but I think if we learn to use it the right way, it's such a great tool. Dark Ritual, just, just getting us some more mana. This can get Will How on turn, uh, probably turn two if, or, or three, quicker down more, uh, depending on what state you're in when you use it. Uh, turn two, sorry. If you had two lands, it would be turn two for Will Help to come down, which is which is great. That's what we kind of want to do. Deadly Dispute, sack a creature. Draw two, get a treasure. That's great. Deadly Rollick for some removal. Infernal Grass for some removal. Laztep Plating can protect all of our permanents, and then it amasses one anyway. This is a great card. I, I love Laztep Plating. I'm actually kind of wondering why Laztep Plating doesn't get more play outside of zombie decks, because I think it just does such a good job. It's kind of heroic intervention blue. But Hexproof is fairly important. Uh, I know it doesn't stop a board wipe, but it does something. Pongify and Rapid Hybrid, very cheap removal, destroying things, reality shift, exile removal, and then the vamp tutor, because at the end of the day, we are still a combo deck, so we do want a couple, a couple tutors to get us what we want. Uh, Damnation, just flat board wipe. Um, I'd thought about a board wipe like Patriarch's Bidding or... Um, kindred dominance where like you pick a creature and just destroy everything else i really i really had but i think the reason i i swung towards damnation was like if i set up a meat hook or i set up a bastion and i wipe the board i'm just going to end up profiting more than my opponents will and so that's why i, I really honestly don't mind playing the damnation d tutor again we, we're we do have some combos in the deck we want to get them empty the library seems kind of fun you can sacrifice egg zombies and reveal cards from the top of your library until you number of zombie cards equal to the number of zombies you sacrifice put those cards on the battlefield we're gonna have a ton of zombie tokens floating around and they seem like the perfect target for this nuke a bunch of zombie tokens get a bunch of the zombies out of our deck profit i, I mean i really don't see how it doesn't end up just leading to really good feed the swarm another piece of removal this one can hit enchantments as well preordain for just a little bit of draw because uh, again even though we're playing the rizic study and the mystic Cremora, i still think we need just a little bit more of draw especially in that early game all right, before we talk about the creatures, we've just got one plane so walker, Liliana Death's Majesty. Pulse one gets us that zombie and we mill two cards. Minus three returns a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, and that creature is a zombie and it shoots other types. Again, it just gets zombies back that we need, and that minus seven destroys all zombie creatures. So we can plus one twice and nuke the whole board, or we can use it to get things back. Okay. Getting on to the uh other enablers carrion feeder is a great combo with grave crawler because we can sacrifice grave crawler to carrion feeder to give it a plus one plus one counter and then get it back with rooftop storm on that route so carrying feeder is great a serac is its own combo with rooftop storm it says if it enters the battlefield if you haven't completed tomb of the annihilation you return it to its owner's hand and venture into the dungeon and then whenever it attacks for each opponent you get a two two zombie well the cool part here is we never have to enter tomb of the annihilation and we can cast this for zero with rooftop storm which means um we can continue to go through the um dungeons and there are dungeons that deal damage to your opponents which mean we will technically win the game that way by just going through that dungeon as much as needed to to kill our opponents so that that is a option or you just go through the annihilation and it, and it comes in but uh great card i've been looking to use a serac and something it's a card i really like um i think it looks pretty cool cemetery reaper other creatures get plus one plus one this is what i love about zombie decks there's so many of these zombies that just buff the rest of your zombies make them even harder to deal with and then two in a black, we can exile a creature card from a graveyard to get a zombie. We can do this to our opponent's graveyards as well, which is great. Cleaver Scab, three to sacrifice a zombie to create two tokens that are copies of that sacrificed creature. This is great because if we pick a non-legendary creature, we sacrifice it, get two copies of them, it goes to the graveyard, and then potentially we can get it back out of the graveyard to have a third. Death Baron, um, zombies, all, we have plus plus one Death Touch. This is great because, again, now all of our zombies have Death Touch. They become harder to block. Paragraph Captain, all zombies get plus one, plus one, and if a zombie control dies, target opponent loses one life. So a little bit worse than our other aristocrats cards, this targets the life, but again, still good because it can still work. This is effectively a replacement for Bash and Remembrance if we have that Grave Crawler combo set up. It just takes longer to, kill, uh, to, to ping our opponents out, but it still works. Diagraph Colossus, plus one, plus one for each zombie in our graveyard, and whenever we cast a zombie spell, we get a zombie token. Great, perfect, exactly what we want. Eternal Skylord, when it comes in, we amass two, and then zombie tokens we control have flying. This is great, because now they're going to become harder to block. Geese and Garolf, our other classic zombie commander, when it comes in, we mill four, 
And then during each of our turns, we can cast a zombie card from the graveyard. This is great because we can hopefully get creatures back. Uh, the only bad part there is that we're milling cards and we'll have to kind of determine if that ends up leading to bad, bad play states if we mill the things we need. Gleaming Overseer comes in a mass as one and then zombie tokens we control have hexproof and menace this is great because now they become even harder to block now people can't take them off the board we talked about our grave crawler headless rider whenever headless rider or another non-token zombie you control dies created two two zombie creature token this i think pairs the best with this grave crawler combo because now we're netting a token every time headless rider just is really good i think it's again one of these cards from crimson vow that just it goes so well into a deck like this where we're trying to sacrifice our own things for value Hordewing Scab, other zombies you control are flying, all of them, not just tokens, all of them. I think that's what makes the Scab pretty good. Or one or more zombies you control deal combat damage to one or more of your opponents. You may draw a card equal to the number of opponents dealt damage this way if you do discard that many cards. So a little bit of looting, but I think the most important part is that flying. <clears throat> Lord of the Accursed, everyone gets plus one, plus one, and then all zombies gain menace until it a turn on the tap. I think it's here just for the buff. The buff makes it so good. Midnight Reaper. A non-token creature you control dies, it deals one damage to you, and you draw a card. Reaper's a little dangerous um, because uh, if we're not careful, we can lose a ton of life. But I think what Reaper does is if we can get the combo down, but we're missing a piece, Reaper will allow us to could allow us to draw into the rest of it and then sacrifice Reaper and and stop losing that life. But I think Reaper is so good because any 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 non-token creature we die, whether it's a board or anything else, we're just gonna we're gonna gain value back from it. Plague Belcher. Whenever zombie control dies, each opponent loses a life. Again, here's another one of these aristocrat cards we're trying to push ourselves into. We talked about the Stitcher, Undead Augur. Whenever eight or another zombie control dies, you draw a card and you lose a life. So this is very similar to Midnight Reaper, where this is going to help us um, kind of get some draw, get ourselves going. The cool part about this is um, with Wilhelm, right, Midnight Reaper and Undead Augur, we sacrifice one zombie at the end of the turn, we draw two and lose one. So you can see we're kind of trying to get this value train going as we push through Undead War Chief. Zombies cost one less to play and zombies get plus two, plus one. That's great. As it pushes our board forward, our tokens become even bigger. And then Vengeful Dead, whenever Vengeful Dead or another zombie is put to the graveyard from play, each opponent loses a life. So again, another one of these aristocrat payoffs for our zombie token. What What do you guys think of Will Hell? Again, I, you know, I, I to be honest, coming into this brew, I, I wasn't like super convinced. But like the more that I look at this, I'm like, man, this is this is exactly what I want. It's a cool aristocrat deck. It plays a strategy uh, in a tribe I, I wouldn't normally pick up, which makes me kind of interested. The Wilhelm Precon is fantastic. If this is a deck you, you want to try to create, um, that Precon has so many great things in it. It doesn't have all of the combo pieces you need in it, but I think it's probably one of the single best decks you can pick up to kind of start a tribe, to start a deck. Um, that deck is bonkers good, and it includes a lot of the things that I talked about here. And in things that it doesn't, you know, it's not bad to pick up. The cool part is what this deck added uh, what the precon added to this deck, you know, clever scab, empty the library, uh, horde wing scab. There's just a bunch of these interesting cards that it added to play that I think make it uh, really good. But let me know what do you guys think of zombies down in the description. Uh, this is when I am committing to trying. I actually, li again, like this deck a lot more than I thought I would. And this is something I could see myself um, taking and uh, upgrading over time. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Drop me a like if you like this video. Subscribe if you want to see me outbrew your favorite magic channel. And I will catch you guys next time.